the need for a place, the homosexual squatter needs a place, a house, a body, a mind to dwell and wonder. Uh, they need a place to sit, stir, stoop. They need a place to spend time. And they and the goal is for them is to mimic stability. They have never been stable people. The homosexual squatter has never the homosexual, then the squatter, and then a homosexual squatter. They have never um exercised any stability beyond um childhood. If they if they lived in situations where the parents always moved, they were always kicked out, they were always homeless, they always had to live with somebody or something like that, you can't blame them for their childhood. And sometimes it takes a good uh, fair amount of time to get yourself into an understanding that you are an adult, right? Because if you are leaning on someone, even if you had a place of your own and you're leaning on someone to give you $25 for gas money every week, meaning that you're not planning your money to plan for the gas money uh, shortage. You're planning to use somebody else's money for your gas shortage. That means you are spending that $25 on something else. And you know that you can go back and ask that person for that $25. Well, that's that's sort of like squatting on, on somebody's finances. You're like a homosexual squatter on someone else's finances. You plan your life based upon their finances. And it looks like you're stable because you got a place. You just so happen to have a place. And that's usually because the mother or the father won't let you come live with them and you haven't found a woman yet to let you come live with her. So the so then the obvious strategy would be just to go ahead and get your own place. But you're not necessarily the type of person who would keep a place if you didn't have to. There are some people who keep a place because they want to, they need to, they have to. They don't want to live with other people. I'm one of those people. Uh, if uh, the time that I had to go and live with my, uh, with my mother and my shelter, it was the most inconvenient time, but I had to go through that process because I was going through a life correction. I had no other choice. Um, and that's usually because some decisions that you made uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago catch up with you later in life. And so if you didn't save money or you didn't have it as a belief system, when hard times come, you're going to see that that decision um, catch up to you. Um, it catches up to you in a warning, right? And so um, they try to mimic stability. If Again, if you can say the same with you, like I said, if you, if you, even if you have your own place, you can say the same with you. If you're always asking somebody for a portion of your rent, if you never have enough money to pay your car note, or if you never have enough money, or you never put away enough money, because you can still have the have the type of job. It may not pay a whole lot, but you can still have it to make your finances, right? But if you are overspending and doing something with your finances, and you know you can go back to your sister, you can go back to your brother, you can go back to your mother or father, you are a squatter uh, on those finances and their finances, and you're trying to mimic stability. The real goal would be to recognize that you are always asking this amount of money from this person every week, just like on a schedule. It just becomes clockwork, like like a schedule. Like it's like you're going instead of going to the ATM to get the money from your bank account, you're going to their. You're treating them like an ATM, okay? You so, so you don't got into that habit and that pattern of doing that to the point that it's hard to pull yourself out of it because it's convenient. You know you can do it. You know it works. It's a strategy that works. But it can't work long time because that person could die. It can't work long time because that person could lose their job. It can't work long time if it, uh, because that person could get married and the husband says, no, you can't give to your brother like that anymore. Right? He's a grown man. He needs to stand up on his own two feet. You can't keep supporting your daughter like that. She's a grown woman. And, and, and if she got that man in her house, then, then he needs to contribute. He needs to stand, he needs to step up as a man and, uh, and contribute. You can't keep doing it because you are wearing out our finances and trying to help her. So they mimic stability because 
they 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 try to give off this image like they are stable people, but they're kind of struggling and can you help them? Okay, well, how long is that going to last? If you you got to look at the situation. If the situation is a person where they where they lost everything th uh, through a natural disaster or or they lost everything through a recession, like the pandemic, people lost jobs during the pandemic. So anyone you help who was affected by like hourly jobs, hourly workers, because you couldn't clock in anywhere, you couldn't go out. People who are salaried, they will still get work. People who are on contracts, like a vendor contract, they'll still get work. But if you have that situation uh, where people are not generating income and they can't even leave the house, right, because of, 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 of government restrictions, when they when the pandemic is finally um, ended and they, they're coming out badly bruised, traumatized, everything like that, helping them is going to take a little bit more time. It's going to take, it's not going to take a year. It could take five years to help help that person through that uh, process. They still need to go try to find a job or try to do something to get some income, uh, keep uh, maintain, keep up the house. Like if you're living with somebody, get up and wash the dishes, uh, vacuum the floor, don't bring people to the house, do what you got to do until you can get to the next transition in your life. Uh, but with home, uh, with homosexual squatters, they mimic stability as if they are stable. And this could be mental stability. This could be uh, psychological stability, spiritual uh, stability, financial stability. Like if they are 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 religious folks, they try to uh, use the Bible to use the Bible or any other resource to justify their decision making. Um, that is to a de that's to the detriment of you because it is true a man who don't work and don't eat right that's vital and again you have to take every situation uh uh and test what's really going on don't be in such a hurry to try to get the person out just because you're inconvenienced because er usually the people who are in a hurry to try to get you out are usually the people who've had to go live with somebody. But now that they are up and they're doing well, they don't want to take on the challenge, uh, the inconvenience of helping helping somebody else. And not everyone is a homosexual squatter. People, I'm the kind of person, I'm not a homosexual squatter. I genuinely needed help for a time. And, and but I was dealing with people who ironically uh, lost their places, needed help, asked me for money, um, when I had it and I gave it or I gave what I had at that time. And when I needed help, it was an issue. So when you're thinking about the homosexual squatter, really think about what they are presenting to you. A lot of times, let people talk, let them run their mouth. This is scripture too. A fool utters all his mind. They're going to tell off on themselves. It's not going to be long. What happens is we volunteer we volunteer our place, we volunteer our money, we volunteer our mind, we volunteer our heart, and we raise our hand like we're in a classroom saying, okay, I know the answer, I know the answer. You don't know the answer. They haven't even told you that they actually have a problem. You decided to let the person come live with you because you thought they had a problem. So they don't need, they, they need somewhere, they just need a house. They need somewhere to dwell and wonder, meaning that they, that, they're going to wander aimlessly until you give them aim. And if a lot of times they don't take aim for you from you, they just go on ahead and leave because they have no other uh, choice but to leave.